So you wanna find a cheap vlogging camera. Whether you're doing this to start a YouTube channel or you just wanna have fun, in this video, we're gonna cover cameras that have specific features that will help you vlog and capture your life. And also, if you wanna get the best pricing and the most up-to-date pricing on the camera gear that we talk about today, make sure to check out the link in the description down below. First up is the Canon T7, which is generally not seen as a vlogging camera or even a YouTube camera, but it's one of the most affordable cameras on the market. And with a few tweaks, I can show you how to get great results from this camera while staying on a budget. The Canon T7 has spectacular colors right in camera, so your face and skin tone will always look great even without editing. The biggest struggle that most vloggers have is to always look good in front of their camera. This camera is going to make looking good and fresh in front of your camera that much easier. Plus, having great colors right in camera means it's much easier to capture things like sunset, fashion, or just beautiful places. With this camera, you can trust that it's going to look as good in camera as it looks to your eye in the real world or maybe even better. In terms of video, this camera does 24 and 30 frames per second in full HD resolution, which is exactly what you need for vlogging. The image looks sharp, detailed, and as good as any other budget camera out there. But there's one thing to know, there isn't any stabilization built into this camera. So I do recommend picking up a vlogging tripod to help you stabilize your vlogging footage. And something to watch out for, the autofocus in video mode isn't great. But wait, River, didn't you say this is a vlogging camera? Well, I'm gonna show you a small nifty solution on how you can actually use this as a vlogging camera. Just make sure to shoot your camera in single focus mode. If you have pressed the shut button while the camera's facing you, it will lock focus to you. And as long as the distance between you and the camera stays relatively the same, you will stay in focus. This is actually a great vlogging camera. The only downside is that you can't see yourself while filming. And generally, everyone is holding the camera at arm's length, which never really changes. But with a bit of practice, you will get used to it and you can easily use this as a vlogging camera. And it's on a budget. Because there's a lot to love about this camera. It's built like an absolute tank and this thing will honestly survive anything. Road trips, trips to the beach, parties, maybe even a zombie apocalypse. And honestly, considering how things have been going this year, you might have to. So the T7 has a minimalist design philosophy. It's straightforward with very few buttons and everything is easy to understand and obvious and intuitive. You can honestly use this camera without ever reading the manual. Plus, it's only a few pages of menus. The settings are easy to understand and really quick to change. The battery life on the T7 is pretty decent, but because you will be shooting video possibly all day, I would definitely pick up a few off-brand batteries from Amazon just to keep your life easy. The one design issue the Canon T7 does have is that it does not have input for external audio. Now, generally, I tell most people that the audio in this camera isn't great, and you can probably see that in most of my recent videos. But because you're gonna be using this camera for vlogging, most likely you're gonna be pretty close to the camera and the camera will have a pretty easy time catching your voice. As long as you're about three to four feet away from the camera, you should be just fine. But anything further than that and you will run into problems. So if you're a giant basketball player with huge arms, you will wanna hold your camera a lot closer. But if you want something that overcomes the downsides of the Canon T7 and you want it to be smaller and more compact, the Canon G7X Mark II might just be perfect for you. The Canon G7X Mark II has probably launched a thousand vlogging careers or just inspired hundreds of people to start shooting. The things to highlight about this camera are definitely the touchscreen, the image quality, and the autofocus. And also, I have one. I've had one since 2016, and it's still one of my favorite cameras. It uses a 20 megapixel one inch sensor, which gives you beautiful colors and sharp, vibrant images. The skin tones always look vibrant and lively on Canon cameras. Like I said earlier with the T7, if you're vlogging and you wanna make sure you look good, Canon cameras are definitely the way to go. The thing I personally love about this camera is the built-in lens, the focal length from 24 to 100 millimeters, which allows you to get wide shots, close-up shots, and even macro shots with a specific macro shot mode built in. The lens also has a variable aperture between f1.8 and 2.8. This means this camera is really good in low light situations. The lens and the sensor in the G7X Mark II will definitely give you a really awesome look to your vlogs, but take it from me, I've had this camera forever. It won't give you a very cinematic look, especially when you compare it to a DSLR or a mirrorless camera because of the smaller sensor in this camera. But have no fear, if that's something you're interested in, I do have a camera later in this list that meets all of those requirements. And technology-wise, this camera delivers Full HD at 24 and 30 frames per second in real time, which is exactly what you need for vlogging. And it gives you two times slow motion at 60 frames per second. Sadly, there is no 4K in this camera. Once again, it is a 2016 camera on a budget. Sadly, no 4K. But this camera does have a bigger brother, the G7X Mark III, which does have 4K with more slow motion modes and even better autofocus, but it's not really a budget camera. 
But the thing that does set the G7X Mark II apart is the autofocusing system. This is a fairly old camera and the autofocusing system is still super fast and reliable even by today's standards. The face tracking makes vlogging really fun and really easy. The first thing you guys probably notice about this camera is how small it is. It is a teeny tiny little guy, which does have the benefit of making it easy to travel with. You can easily throw this into your jacket pocket and it just fits. The buttons on the back of this camera are minimal and the menu system is really easy to understand and intuitive. Again, Canon cameras, great design. But the screen on the back is also a touch screen, which allows you to change settings just using the touch screen, but also use the touch screen to do autofocus. You can simply tap something and it will stick focus to that. And the screen on the back actually flips up so you can easily see yourself while vlogging. And honestly, this camera is really simple and intuitive to use. If you can use a smartphone, you can easily get great results with this camera. Plus, the internal audio on this camera is super solid. It does not have an input for external audio, but I don't think that's an issue because the internal audio on this camera is so good. This was actually Casey Neistat's first camera when he first started vlogging, which is why I got it. And if you don't know who Casey Neistat is, no worries. It's this guy right here with 12.4 million followers on his vlogging channel. This dude's inspiring. The only thing I would be concerned about when it comes to the G7X Mark II is the battery life. It's a small camera with a small battery life. If you're going to be filming all day, I would definitely get at least one spare battery just to make sure you can keep filming. But if you're only filming on and off here and there, one battery should be just fine to get you through the entire day. Overall, the G7X Mark II is a great camera for vlogging, but because of the smaller sensor, it may not be great for that YouTube cinematic look, which needs a bigger sensor. But the next camera might be perfect for you because it's known for doing that exact thing. And that is the Canon M50 and its little brother, the Canon M200, which I will talk about at the end of this list. The Canon M50 and the M200 are basically the same camera with a different body type. So the Canon M50 is probably the camera that 90% of you guys watching this will get because it's not only an affordable camera in the realm of vlogging cameras, but it also has features that make it ideal for vlogging and for camera newbies. The main thing that you will notice right off the bat is the side articulating screen, which not only makes it easy to see yourself, but it also allows you to get high angle and low angle shots. On top of that, the screen also has touch sensitivity, so not only can you control the camera just using the touch screen, but you can also use it for touch autofocus. And the autofocus specifically in the Canon M50 is phenomenal. It has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is not only one of the best in class for any camera system, but it also has intelligent face tracking, which makes it so easy to make sure that faces are always in focus. The autofocus in the Canon M50 is extremely reliable and it is one of the best autofocusing systems you can get in any consumer level camera. The Canon M50 is about as easy to use for video as a smartphone. This camera is designed from the ground up for camera newbies and people that just don't want to get bogged down with technical information. This camera is really made for creation and creators. In terms of technology, it has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is going to give you that YouTube cinematic look. And just like every other Canon camera, the colors are spectacular that need almost no editing. So you will look good and your skin will look fresh. And the N50 has an added benefit of being pretty decent in low light. While it may not be as good as a Sony camera, you will be just fine in dimly lit restaurants and parties, which is where vloggers go, right? As for the actual shooting, it does 24 and 30 frames per second in full HD resolution, which is what you need for vlogging, but it also has slow motion options for montage sequences, like 60 frames per second for two times slow motion and 120 frames per second for five times slow motion. Now, the 120 frames per second is in 720p, which is a pretty low resolution, but if you're doing fast cuts in a vlog, no one will really notice. And if you add a little bit of sharpness, it looks almost the same. Now, this camera does have 4K, but in 4K mode, it zooms into your image which simply doesn't look good and it loses a lot of detail and sharpness. But on top of that, you lose your wide shot so people can't see what's behind you while you're vlogging. And in 4K mode, the autofocus becomes really slow and unreliable. I would reserve 4K mode for special shots if I was using this camera, but I really wouldn't use it as my main shooting mode. And ultimately, a sharp, beautifully detailed image in full HD is more than good enough for vlogging. And on top of that, this camera does have really solid internal audio, so you don't need an external mic to get great audio with this camera. But I should mention that this camera does have an input for external audio 
for wireless mics and shotgun mics. And honestly, in my humble opinion, I think the M50 is probably one of the best options for vloggers today. The M50 has a compact body, pretty decent battery life, and the highlights being touch autofocus and the side articulating screen. There's really not much else that you could want from this camera. And earlier in this video, I mentioned the M200, the little brother to the M50 that's also slightly cheaper. The M200 has the same internal specs, but is an even more compact camera. It's about $150 to $100 less. The main difference that you will notice is that instead of a side articulating screen, the M200 has a flip up screen that comes up to the top. The smaller body allows for a much sleeker profile that's much easier to keep in your pocket or your purse. A lot of you guys might like the fact that the M200 is a lot smaller than the M50. Also, there is an M6 Mark II which looks a lot like the Canon M200, but has 4K without a crop and full HD at 120 frames per second, plus every other bells and whistles that you could possibly want on a camera. But here's the thing, it's not a budget camera, and I don't think any of you guys should actually buy that camera. You can easily take a budget camera, and with a few tweaks, you can make it perform like an expensive pro-level camera. So if you wanna get the best quality photos and videos without having to spend a ton of money on expensive gear that you really don't need, in that case, make sure to check out the link in the description down below. I'm gonna show you my top secrets on how to get the most out of the gear that you're using right now, even if that gear is a smartphone. You'll get easy steps on how to really improve your work today. So make sure to check that out. And if you guys have any questions about the gear that we talked about today or the course, make sure to hit me up in the comments down below. And I'm sure I will see you guys either in the course or in the next video. Until then guys, peace.